In React, components let you split the UI into independent, reusable pieces. Conceptually, components are like JavaScript functions. They accept arbitrary inputs called props and return React elements describing what should appear on the screen. There are two types of components. The simplest is the functional component. We call it a functional component because it is literally a JavaScript function. This function is a valid React component because it accepts a single props object argument with data and returns a React element. Props stands for properties. The second type of component is a class component. These use an ES6 class to define a component. This class component and the previous function component are equivalent in React's point of view. Now, how do we render these components? In previous videos, we've only encountered React elements that represent DOM tags. Elements can also represent user-defined components. When React sees an element representing a user-defined component, it passes JSX attributes and children to this component as a single object. We call this object props. For example, this code renders hello Sarah on the screen. So here's what happens. We call react dom render with the welcome name equals Sarah element. React calls the welcome component and passes the object as the props. Our welcome component returns an element as the result. React dom efficiently updates the dom to match. Note that component names must always start with a capital letter. React treats components starting with lowercase letters as DOM tags. For example, div represents an HTML div tag, but welcome represents a component that requires welcome to be in scope. Components can also contain other components. This is very useful for common elements such as buttons, form elements, dialogues, and so on. For example, we can create an app component that renders welcome many times. We should also put thought into splitting components into smaller components. For example, this component can be tricky to change because of all of the nesting, and it's also hard to reuse individual parts of it. If, for instance, we need to reuse the avatar portion in another part of the app, we couldn't. So let's extract a few components from it. First, we'll extract avatar. The avatar doesn't need to know that it's being rendered inside a comment. This is why we have given its prop a more generic name, user, rather than author. I recommend naming the props from the component's point of view rather than the context in which it's being used, since it could potentially be reused in another context. We can now simplify comment a little bit. Next, we'll extract a user info component that renders an avatar next to the user's name. Then, let's simplify comment even further. Extracting components might seem like grunt work at first, but having a palette of reusable components pays off in larger apps. A good rule of thumb is that if a part of your UI is used several times or is complex enough on its own, it's a good candidate to be a reusable component. Another thing to note about props is that they are read-only. Components must never modify its own props. Here's an example of what is referred to as a pure function. It does not attempt to change its props. This function, however, is considered impure because it changes its own props. React has a single strict rule. All React components must act like pure functions with respect to their props. So application UIs are dynamic and change over time. So how can we update these props to reflect these changes? In the next video, we'll discuss the concept of state. State allows React components to change their output over time in response to other actions, network responses, and anything else without violating this rule. Like this video to help me out, and subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like this.